Welcome back to P1. Today we are looking at unit 6.3 areas of triangles. For this we need two sides and the angle in between them. So if I have this triangle A, P and C with little a, little b and little c and the area will be a half times to the sides a and b and the angle in between it. That could also mean I could have for example a and c as the sides and angle b or equally I could have b and c as the sides and angle A. It doesn't really matter about your labeling in this case in terms of A, B and C. You just need to remember that it would be two sides, for example this side and this side, and the angle that's in between them. Again, I'm not going to prove the formula. If you do want to see that kind of proof, just put it in the comments. So here we go, straightforward one, um, labeling my triangle, I get A, B and C. I want to find the area, so the area is going to be a half of sides B times C. That's going to be multiplied by sine A. And like I said before, you don't need to worry about the labeling, you can just label it one way every time if you want. So we've got a half times 4.9 times 8.1 times sine 62 and so my area equals 17.5 centimeters squared now this example is slightly different we've given the area to the sides and we need to find the angle that's in between them so again, I'm going to start off by labelling my triangle, A, C, and little b. And again, I'm finding essentially that angle A. So I've got area equals a half B, C, sine A. Area is 400. B is 40, C is 30, and it's sine Y, which is what I'm trying to find. So getting sine Y on its own, I'll need to um, essentially times by 2 and divide by my 40 and my 30, or sort that out first and then divide by it. So we have 400 divided by 600, which is 2 thirds. So sine y equals 2 thirds, so y equals inverse sine of 2 thirds, and this gives me 41.8 degrees. Now you might think we're done there, okay, and if you were, you, you would end up losing some additional marks in your question, because we're looking at the possible values. Okay, so while the diagram certainly suggests a different angle to this, it's not always the case, but we do have to think about what we did last time in the previous video, where because of the way sine is, we could actually have two potential values that work. So an alternative would be 180 minus my 41.8. And of course, I'm just using the full value in the calculator, but it should make a difference in this case. And I get 138.2. Now, if you try both 41.8 and the 138.2 into this formula for, for A or for Y, you'll see that you get both answers will give you 400. So there are two possible answers. Okay, and that's just to do with how sine works between 0 and 180, sine is positive, so there's always going to be two possible answers as a triangle also adds up to 180. Okay, so when working out an angle using one of these rules, the sine rule from the last video, or when I'm looking at areas, when I've got to use sine as well, 
what you need to make sure you're careful of is that if the question does not state whether it's acute or obtuse, because it will be one or the other, then you need to make sure you find both. Don't forget, if you are studying International A Level Maths and you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe as then it will make it easier to find my videos when you need help. Okay, so this one, let's do a very, very quick sketch. So it's nice to do a sketch even when questions are obvious. It doesn't have to be a perfect sketch. I'm going to make this one 30 degrees, which will be at, the, be at point P. So let's go Q, P, and R. And then P, Q is X plus 5. And P, R is 3 minus X. And we need to show this. So area is a half. Now let's label this. So little p, little r, and little q. So we're looking at r, q, sine p. So a half times x plus 5 times 3 minus x times sine 30. Now, sine 30 is a half, so a half times a half is a quarter, so I can pop that straight in there. And then I'm going to expand my double brackets here. So x times 3, 3x, got minus x squared, plus 15, minus 5x. One quarter equals 15 minus 2x minus x squared. Now, it is important that I show these two steps because it's a show that. So I need to be clear with what I'm doing. Okay, part B now, completing the square or otherwise find the maximum value of A and its corresponding value of X. So let's start by completing the square. So for that, I'm just going to put a square bracket in. I'm going to focus on inside the brackets. Now, what I actually also would like to do is take a minus sign outside. And that will just make this a little bit easier for me to deal with. So taking that minus outside means that all my values have changed sign. That just makes my life so much easier. So x squared plus 2x will become x plus 1 squared minus 1 squared is 1 minus 15. So you got minus a quarter x plus 1 squared minus 16 or minus 1 quarter x plus 1 squared plus 4. Now that is another way of obviously writing down my uh, expression for the area. Now inside this bracket doesn't matter what happens here because it's squared it's always going to be positive so this bracket is always going to be positive negative times a positive is going to be negative so for me to get the maximum value this negative value would have to be zero it's the only way to have a maximum value so this when this is zero the area will be four so the maximum area is 4, 
and this will happen when x is negative 1 because when x is negative 1 that then makes this bracket 0 and a minus quarter times 0 squared is obviously 0 squared. Now there's an alternative way of doing this and it's with differentiation. Now while you haven't actually got the differentiation yet you may have experienced it before and certainly by the time you get to do these in an exam you would have experienced some differentiation. So I'm going to put that in here now but uh, like I said, you know, you haven't experienced it yet, but uh, it's useful to kind of know how to do it. So all I'm doing, first of all, is I'm just multiplying everything through by that quarter. Okay, so 15 over 4, the minus 2x over 4 becomes minus x over 2, and minus x squared over 4 there. Now, when I differentiate, so dA by dx, the constant will become 0. The x, this one will become just minus a half. And then I bring the 2 down, so minus 2x over 4. That will cancel slightly. So this leaves me with minus a half minus x over 2. Then maximum and minimum points occur when this dA by dx will be equal to zero. So minus a half minus x over two equals zero. So we're left with x over two equals minus a half, x equals minus one. So that finds our value of x, and then I just substitute it into this original equation here and it will give me the area. So 15 minus 2 times minus 1, minus minus 1 squared. So we get 15 plus 2 is 17, minus 1 is 16. So a quarter of 16 is 4. So exactly the same as the previous answer. I've gone through that quickly. Um, it will make more sense when you get to the differentiation if you haven't experienced differentiation yet. But clearly in this case it's probably easier to do the completing the square.